Riyadh as Salahim. Chapter 25, Discharging the Trusts. Allah, the Exalted, says. Verily, Allah commands that you should render back the trusts to those to whom they are due. Surah 4 verse 58. Truly, we did offer Alamana, the trust or moral responsibility or honesty and all the duties which Allah has ordained, to the heavens and the earth, and the mountains, but they declined to bear it and were afraid of it, means, afraid of Allah's torment. But man bore it. Verily, he was unjust to himself, and ignorant, of its results. Surah 33 verse 72 Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, There are three signs of a hypocrite, when he speaks, he lies, when he makes a promise, he breaks it, and when he is trusted, he betrays his trust. Reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. Another narration adds the words, even if he observes fasts, performs salat and asserts that he is a Muslim. Commentary, a hypocrite is the one who professes Islam before the Muslims, but conceals hatred and animosity against them. This double dealing is worse than kafir. This is the reason the noble Quran has declared about them that they will be in the lowest depths of the hell. The hypocrites referred to here lived at the time of the Prophet peace be upon him, and he was informed about them through Wadi, Revelation. It is very difficult to identify the class of hypocrites in this age. It is almost impossible to know the hypocrisy of faith. The practical hypocrisy is, however, now very common among the Muslims. It can be identified on the strength of the traits which have been stated in the Ahadith about them. These traits are very common among many of the present-day Muslims. Their conduct bears the marks of hypocrisy. This practical hypocrisy is, however, not kufr as is the case with the hypocrisy of faith. Hud Haifa bin al-Yaman, may Allah be pleased with him, reported, Messenger of Allah peace be upon him foretold to us two a hadith. I have seen one, being fulfilled, and I am waiting for the other. He peace be upon him told us, Amana, the trust, descended in the innermost, root, of the hearts of men, that is, it was in their heart innately, by fitra, or pure human nature. Then the Quran was revealed and they learned from the Quran and they learned from the Sunnah. Then the Prophet peace be upon him told us about the removal of Amana. He said, the man would have some sleep, and Amana would be taken away from his heart leaving the impression of a faint mark. He would again sleep, and Amana would be taken away from his heart leaving an impression of a blister, as if he rolled down an ember on your foot and it was vesicled. He would see a swelling having nothing in it. He, the Prophet peace be upon him then took up a pebble, and rolled it over his foot and said, the people would enter into transactions with one another and hardly a person would be left who would return, things, entrusted to him, and there would look like an honest person, till it would be said, in such and such tribe there is a trustworthy man. And they would also say about a person, how prudent he is, how handsome he is and how intelligent he is, whereas in his heart there would be no grain of faith. Hud Haifa bin al-Yaman, may Allah be pleased with him, added, I had a time when I did not care with whom amongst you I did business, I entered into a transaction, for if he were a Muslim, his faith would compel him to discharge his obligation to me, and if he were a Christian or a Jew, his guardian, surety, would compel him to discharge his obligation to me. But today I would not enter into a transaction except with so and so reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim. Commentary, the word amana, trust, is a very comprehensive term which includes everything like adherence to Islamic injunctions, fairness in dealing, giving everybody his due, etc. According to this hadith, with decline in moral values the true sense of amana will gradually go on diminishing, 
and eventually a stage will come which has been elucidated in the text of this hadith. Hud Haifa and Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with them, reported that they heard Messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying, Allah will assemble mankind, and the believers will stand till Jannah will be brought near them. They will then go to Adam peace be upon him and say, O oh our father, ask Allah, that Jannah may be opened for us, but he will reply. There was nothing that put you out of Jannah except your father's sin. I am not the one to do that, go to my son Ibrahim, Abraham, the beloved man of Allah. Then Ibrahim peace be upon him when approached, will say, I am not the one to do that, for I was only a friend, and that is not a lofty status but ask Musa, Moses, to whom Allah spoke. They will then go to Musa peace be upon him but he will say, I am not the one to do that, go to Isa, Jesus, Allah's word and spirit. Isa peace be upon him will say, I am not the one to do that. So they will come to me, and I will stand and be given permission. Amana and ties of relationship will be sent forth, and will stand on the sides of the Sarat, that is, the bridge set over hellfire, right and left, and the first of you will pass like lightning. I said, that is Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. I ransom you with my father and mother, what is like the movement of lightning. The messenger of Allah replied, have you not seen how the lightning goes and returns in the twinkling of an eye? Next group will pass, like the passing of the breeze, next like the passing of a bird, and the next with the speed of a running man, according to the quality of their deeds. During all this time, your prophet peace be upon him will remain standing on the bridge saying, O oh my Lord, keep them safe, keep them safe till men's deeds are so weak that a man comes who will be able only to crawl. On both sides of the bridge pronged flesh hooks, placed under command will be hung, and will seize those about whom they receive command, some people being lacerated and escaping and others being thrown violently into hell. Abu Huraira added, By him in whose hand Abu Huraira's soul is, the pit of Hahanam, hell, is seventy years in depth. Reported in Sahih Muslim. Commentary. This hadith mentions the horrors of the day of resurrection which are evident from the fact that, even prophets will be fearful of Allah and making supplication to him. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him alone will be requesting Allah for bestowing his mercy on humans. This hadith also describes the grace of the prophet peace be upon who will then intercede for all. Abu Qubayb Abdullah bin Az-Zubair, may Allah be pleased with them, reported, when Az-Zubair, got ready to fight in the battle of Al-Jamal, he called me and said, my son, whoever is killed today will be either a wrongdoer or a wronged one. I expect that I shall be the the wronged one today. I am much worried about my debt. Do you think that anything will be left over from our property after the payment of my debt? My son, sell our property and pay off my debt. Az-Zubair then willed one-third of that portion to his sons, namely Abdullah's sons. He said, one-third of the one-third? If any property is left after the payment of debts, one-third, of the one-third of what is left is to be given to your sons. Hisham, a subnarrator added, some of the sons of Abdullah were equal in age to the sons of Az-Zubair, as example, Kubayb and Abad. Abdullah had nine sons and nine daughters at that time. The narrator Abdullah added. He kept on instructing me about his debts and then said, My son, should you find yourself unable to pay any portion of my debt then beseech my master for his help. By Allah, I did not understand what he meant and asked, Father, who is your master? He said, Allah. By Allah. Whenever I faced a difficulty in discharging any portion of his debt, I would pray, O master of Zubair, discharge his debt, and he discharged it. Zubair was martyred. He left no money, but he left certain lands, 
one of them in Algaba, eleven houses in Al Medina, two in Basra, one in Kufa, and one in Egypt. The cause of his indebtedness was that a person would come to him asking him to keep some money of his in trust for him. Zubair would refuse to accept it as a trust, fearing it might be lost, but would take it as a loan. He never accepted a governorship, or revenue office, or any public office. He fought along with Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman, may Allah be pleased with them. Abdullah added, I prepared a statement of his debts, and they amounted to two million and two hundred thousand. Hakim bin Hizam met me and asked me, Nephew, how much is due from my brother as debt? I kept it as secret and said, A hundred thousand. Hakim said, By Allah. I do not think your assets are sufficient for the payment of these debts. I said, What would you think if the amount were two million and two hundred thousand? He said, I do not think that you would be able to clear off the debts. If you find it difficult let me know. Az Zubair, may Allah be pleased with him, had purchased the land in Algaba for a hundred and seventy thousand. Abdullah sold it for a million and six hundred thousand, and declared that whosoever had a claim against Az Zubair, may Allah be pleased with him, should see him in Algaba. Abdullah bin Jafur, may Allah be pleased with him, came to him and said, Az Zubair, May Allah be pleased with him, owed me four hundred thousand, but I would remit the debt if you wish. Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, said, no. Ibn Jafar said, if you would desire for postponement I would postpone the recovery of it. Abdullah said, no. Ibn Jafar then said, in that case, measure out a plot for me. Abdullah marked out a plot. Thus he sold the land and discharged his father's debt. There remained out of the land four and a half shares. He then visited Muawiyah who had with him at the time Amor bin Uthman, al Munhir bin Az-Zubair and Ibn Zamat, may Allah be pleased with them. Muawiyah, may Allah be pleased with him, said, What price did you put on the land in al -Gaba? He said, One hundred thousand for a each share. Muawiyah inquired, how much of it is left? Abdullah said, four and a half shares. Al-Mundhur bin Az-Zubair said, I will buy one share for a hundred thousand. Amor bin Uthman said, I will buy one share for a hundred thousand. Ibn Zamah said, I will buy one share for a hundred thousand. Then Muawiyah asked, how much of it is now left? Abdullah said, one and a half share. Muawiyah said, I will take it for one hundred and fifty thousand. Later Abdullah bin Jafar sold his share to Muawiyah for six hundred thousand. When Abdullah bin Az-Zubair, may Allah be pleased with him, finished the debts, the heirs of Az-Zubair, may Allah be pleased with him, asked him to distribute the inheritance among them. He said, I will not do that until I announce during four successive Hajj seasons, let he who has a claim against us Zubair come forward and we shall discharge it. He made this declaration on four Hajj seasons, and then distributed the inheritance among the heirs of us Zubair, may Allah be pleased with him, according to his will. Az Zubair, may Allah be pleased with him, had four wives. Each of them received a million and two hundred thousand. Thus Az Zubair's total property was amounted to 50 million and 200 thousand. Reported in Sahih al-Bukhari.